Good morning, church family. 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 Good morning above our church. Hello, church family. Hello, church family. Good morning, church family. Good morning, church family. Hi, everyone. Hello, church family. Good morning, church family. Good morning, church family. Good morning, above bar church. Good morning, church family. Good morning, above bar. Good morning, church family. Good morning, church family. Hello, church family. Good morning, church family. Good morning, above bar church. Good morning, Above Bar Church family. Good morning, Above Bar Church family. Good morning, Church family. Hello, Church family. <laughs> Hello, my family, Church. Good morning, Above Bar Church. Good morning, Church family. Good morning, Above Bar Church. Hello, Church, church family. family. Oh, Church family. Hello everyone and welcome to this morning's service. My name is Sophie and it's great to have you with us today. Whether you are a regular or not, whether you are watching alone or with members of your household or family, whether you are in the UK or in another country, perhaps this morning you're feeling weak and weary. Perhaps some of us are mourning. Perhaps some of us feel as though we failed or as if we don't belong. Perhaps we feel like a sinner needing a saviour. And to everyone else, you are really welcome here this morning. Today, we are going to be looking at how we can be loving our city and our world. As followers of Jesus, this is something that we are required to do. In Jeremiah 29 verse 7, it says, Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that we can come before you however our weeks have been and however we are feeling right now. Speak to us, we pray, and prepare our hearts to hear what you have to say to us this morning, that we might be encouraged, challenged and refreshed by your word. Draw near to us and help us to draw near to you and to delight in you more. Help us to understand how we can love and serve our city and world. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'm now going to pass on to Tom and the band who will be leading us with our sun worship this morning. Lifting high the mighty sun As we sing to you our God Be lifted up As we come before your throne Let the joy of heaven flow We were made to worship you And you alone We join the song that magnifies your name Shouting out your praise We lift our hands and give you all the glory So the world will see that Jesus is alive He's alive And we sing for the Lord is good And we shout for His love Stay silent, Lord. And we go wherever you will go. And we live that the world would know. And we won't stay silent, won't stay silent, Lord. Let your praise fill the skies. You have opened up our eyes. And we long for this world. To know your name We worship you, Lord our God We set our eyes on things above The church is here, Lord, on with love Have your way We join the song that magnifies your name A holy people 
shouting out your praise We lift our hands and give you all the glory So the world will see that Jesus is alive He's alive And we sing for the Lord is good And we shout for His love Jack and Jagen family are going to bring us our Bible reading from Luke chapter 10 now. So if you want to grab a Bible or follow along on the screen. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when she came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him he took pity on him. He went to him, bandaging his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He then put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expenses. Okay, folks, well, we have a very well-known story today that we're going to look at and it may be well known to you but I want you to enter into the story today and I'm going to teach you a tool to enter into a story from the Bible. The Bible's full of the best stories, amazing stories and we may be kind of over familiar with them. Today I'm going to teach you a tool and I want you to put out your hand like this and you've got five fingers hopefully on your hand, most of you. And I want you to do this and then turn your hand this way. And we're going to ask, firstly, where am I in the story? Because your thumb points to yourself like this. Where am I in the story? This is a very important question. There are lots of characters in this story of the Good Samaritan. Where am I? Where do I fit in? Which character do I resonate with in this story? And that will bring it alive for you. The second finger points up to God or to Jesus. So you're asking the question, what do I learn in this story about Jesus or about God? And that's very important as well, because every story reveals something about the author of all stories. And then the third finger, unfortunately, is often a finger that you point at somebody else. So this finger, we're asking the question, why are other people like this? Why are the people in the story 
like this? Why are they behaving like this? Why are they doing this? Why are they saying this? Or why are they not doing this? So why are other people like this? And then fourthly, or I should have used my left hand, it's my ring finger. And um, this uh, ring here signifies the fact that I'm married to Anne. I've made a commitment to Anne. And I should be asking the question when I see my, my ring finger, how can I put into practice the promises that I've made to Anne? And the, the promises I've made are to, to love her, to be faithful to her and de until death uh, parts us for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. So in the story, I'm asking, how can I put this teaching into practice? That's the application of the story. How can I put it into practice? And then the fifth one, the one the Americans call the pinky. This is, who can I tell this story to? Now, maybe as you read a story in the Bible, you just need to tell the story to yourself. Let it sink into yourself. But maybe you have a family. Maybe you can tell the story to your children and help them become storytellers. Or maybe there's someone you meet socially you can tell the story to or someone at work. So uh, it's very important that we're thinking when we read something in the Bible, who, who can I share this with? Because that's how the stories originally in the first century were shared around. That's how the Bible was written. OK, so here's your hand. I want you to try and recap what the fingers stand for. See if you can do that. OK, so the thumb. Where am I in the story? The finger, what do I learn about God in the story? Third finger, why are other people like this? How can I put this into practice? And who am I going to tell this to? Well, thank you for that amazing, dramatic acting of the story of the Good Samaritan. Right, now we're going to ask those five questions of the story. So first of all, where am I in the story? Now, the first person I think of is, I suppose, the priest. Uh, maybe because uh, that's because I, I'm not a priest, actually, uh, but I do work for a church. The government considers me to be a religious worker. Actually, I don't like that word, religious worker. I don't really consider myself religious, but nevertheless, I, I work for the church, and there have been several times where Somebody has been in need and I have walked by on the other side. I'm too busy. I need to prepare a sermon. I, I need to go to a prayer meeting. I need to do something else religious. Uh, the second person I think of, I guess, is the, the Levite who is like an assistant. And that's what I am. I, I'm, I'm an assistant. I'm not the boss of Above Bar Church. Thank you, God. I don't think I ever want to be. I'm an assistant. And the, the assistant saw this man in need, and he too walked by on the other side. Maybe I think of myself as the, the teacher of the law. Actually, he stood up to, to test Jesus. And there are lots of people who, under the guise of kind of investigating Christianity, actually, they're, they're, just, trying to, they're just trying to put it down somehow, trying to ask awkward questions, or trying to justify themselves, make themselves look good. Well, we all do that, so I can resonate with with his character, certainly. Or maybe we think of ourselves as the Good Samaritan. A lot of people think of themselves as good people and uh, they, they, they do the law, they obey the law, they're kind and, and liberal and, and do good things. Um, or maybe they're, they're good people religiously and so they think of themselves as, as a good person. But I think Jesus really wants us to enter the story as the man in the road, the Jewish man in the road. I need mercy. I am broken. And I have been rescued by somebody who owes me nothing. I am someone who, who tries to justify myself, but I, I try to make myself appear good, but I am not good. I am broken, uh, in need of mercy and somebody has come into my road. And he didn't just risk his life in a dangerous place. He gave his life for me so that I can inherit eternal life. So it's absolutely vital in this story that I see myself first and foremost as the man in the road. 
Do you see yourself like that? You're in need of mercy. It's absolutely vital you see yourself like that. If you don't see yourself like that, well, you may as well switch off this program now and go and enjoy the sunshine this morning because that's where we need to start. But secondly, uh, what do I learn about Jesus? Well, Jesus is the ultimate good Samaritan. Jesus didn't just come for those who deserve inherit, to inherit eternal life. Jesus came for those who've got themselves in trouble. You know that road to Jericho? It was a dangerous road. In fact, there was a stretch in it that was called the Pass of Blood. And I, I'm sure the listeners to Jesus' story knew that it was a dangerous road. Some roads in Southampton are pretty dangerous after dark, but this was a particularly dangerous road. People were always getting jumped. But Jesus came into that road at great danger to himself. In fact, he put himself in the ultimate danger. He got killed, but he showed me mercy and compassion and is bringing me healing. The other thing that I learn about God in the passage is that he's given a law. That's how the the story starts with the lawyer. And Jesus says, you tell me what's in the law. And the lawyer rightly summed up the law, that the law of God, the Old Testament, can be summed up like this, that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our mind. And we're to love our neighbour as ourself. That's absolutely right. But listen to this. The law is a way of life, but it is not the way to life. I'll say that again. The law is a way of life, but it's not the way to life. Why is that? It's because I can't do it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. I can't do it. Love your neighbour as yourself. I can't do it. That's why I need to see myself as the man in need of rescue, the man who's in the road needing mercy. That's the way to life. Okay, thirdly and lastly for now, why are, why are people like this in the story? Well, lots of people are like the lawyer. They're, they're good people and they feel they've kept the law, whether that's a secular law or a religious law. They've pretty much kept it. They've never done anything really bad and they think they can, if there is a heaven, if there is a God, they will get there because they've been good. They're saved by their morality, whether it's a secular morality, which is be good to people, be nice to people, be kind, generous, be liberal, be open hearted, or a, or a religious morality, keep the commandments. Why are people like this? They're like this because they don't understand the gospel, that the gospel is not about morality. It's not about morality because we can't keep the law. And what do we learn about people in the story? Well, people want to limit who their neighbour is. Uh, if they're to help people, they normally help people who are like them. Why are we like this? Well, we're like this when we've forgotten the gospel of the mercy of God, that God, when, when we were enemies of God, he came to save us. But, you know, when the mercy of God gets down in a person's soul, when when you realise that you have been lifted from a broken state onto his saddle, as it were, and healed and rescued, then anything can happen. You know, a highlight for me uh, of this lockdown was watching the movie on Amazon Prime, the free Burma Rangers movie. It is the best thing that you will ever watch on a, on a TV set in your life. If you watch that, you will have a spiritual experience as we did. It is well worth the 20 quid. What's it about? It's about a family who gave themselves to help broken people all their lives in Burma and in Syria and Iraq who continually put themselves in danger. Now they're working with people from ISIS who were formerly trying to shoot them and kill them. Why, why are they like that? Why are they doing that? It is because they have been bowled over by the mercy of God and that has given them the motivation to do what Jesus said to the teacher of the law, go and do likewise. 
But it's not just in Burma or Syria or Iraq. We're going to hear from someone now from Southampton, who formerly was a good person, but wanted nothing to do with the down and outs. And now he is giving his life to help people who are homeless and who are in need. Coming from an atheist background uh, many years ago, um, kind of just building my own empire and not thinking about other things, I thought about people on the streets, but actually never did anything about it. I wasn't interested. But what changed was basically becoming a Christian and finding God. People who I never really had any time for are the ones that actually that I love now. So Jesus really did all that and changed me and these volunteers. So we, we've been doing the big breakfast and you can see some of the volunteers behind doing this for 10 to 12 years now. And basically that big breakfast has grown from 70 to 100 people. And we serve a community now, we feed them, we look after these vulnerable people, these people we love, we care. The impact it's made is that we have relationships with all these guys now. They come here, they feel the love, they love, they love churches, they know we're not after anything, we're only there to serve them, just the way Jesus served us. So we do it, we try, we try and be like Jesus. And people see that and they love, they love the volunteers here, they talk with them, they have great relationships, they feel comfortable, they come here, have tea, coffee, chat, um, there's a big breakfast central now, which again, and some of our leaders started up and it's fantastic. It's an environment where everyone can be relaxed and just be themselves. I just wanted to say what we've done in the last eight weeks since COVID. So on my list here, we have given out 605 frozen meals. We've done 146 bags for like CAP and other people, vulnerable people have needed food bags. We've done 82 homeless bags on the streets even during COVID, and we've done 1,392 lunches over the course, and that's 2,225 meals effectively. And the cost of that, if you were to buy it, was, it's about £10,314. So that's the cost in eight weeks. So I'm expecting that to escalate by 50%, if not more. I've taken three and a half thousand frozen meals in the last two weeks. Um, and Iceland again helping me to store it there. But what I actually need now is I need freezer space, which I'm looking at. I'm asking for money now so that I can either buy these freezers or rent them. And I think renting will be the option. But there's several thousand a year to basically rent. It will be excellent to have any donations for the big breakfast so that we could actually get this. But if we had this freezer, if I had access to this, we're going to be able to serve the whole of Southampton. Thanks so much, Chris and Sanjay. It is wonderful to hear how God is using people and changing lives. And we're going to sing about that now, the opportunities that we have uh, to live for Jesus, to live for God. Let's sing together. Today, teach me how to choose your way. Help me lift my eyes to see who you are. You are faithful, always true. Every good thing comes from you. Meet me in your word and help me worship you. It's a new, new day to sing your praise. It's a new, new day to walk in your
think about where we've got to so far. Put your hands up. First of all, where am I in the story? Well, I'm someone who's broken and who needs God's mercy. What do I learn about Jesus from this story? Well, he gave his life to rescue me. Why are people like this? Well, we think we can save ourselves and we forget how much we need God. And now we come to our fourth finger. How do I put this story into practice? I think there are main two, two main things we need to remember here. First of all, we all need God's mercy. Chris pointed out that for all of us, the starting point needs to be that we're like the man lying in the road needing help. Knowing that I'm broken and need rescuing by God is the way to life. And that's the life that Jesus offers to all of us. The story shows us what God's love is like. His love is greater than we could ever imagine. And so today, whether we feel great or we feel rubbish, God wants to come alongside us. Jesus wants to step out of the saddle to help us. Maybe today you've realised for the first time that you need God's mercy. So what do you do about that? Well, first of all, you need to admit to him that you need him. Then you need to ask him for his forgiveness for all the ways you've messed up and ask him that his Holy Spirit would help you to change and make you more like Jesus and put him at the centre of your life. But once we've received God's mercy, how do we put this story into practice? So the second thing I think is that we need to show God's mercy to other people. And we're just going to hear from one or two people in our church family about what that means for them practically. How do they love their neighbour? as Jesus called us to do. So we're just hearing from a few people what they've been doing to show God's love to people. So Josh and Lucy, can you tell us? Um, I post the letters for, for the daily devotions. And Josh? I put the letters in the envelope for the daily devotions. Thank you for doing that. That's great. And Elaine, what are you doing at the moment? I've been helping out at Basics Bank to um, stack shelves and pack groceries for people who need them. Brilliant. Thank you. Chloe, how about you? Well, I will start my new job in a care home to helping the vulnerable people. Yeah. Thanks, Chloe. That's brilliant. And what about Eden, Barney and Ozzy? What are you doing? We are asking God to help people who live in slums in East Africa, and especially young black in summer who we sponsor. We are giving money to charities like Tear Fund and Turning Point who are working in these areas. And when we wash our hands, we pray for people who don't have clean water. That's brilliant. Thank you. And Biddy, how about you? Well, um, I've got the uh, privilege of having some lovely internationals living with me. Uh, They come from a country where... It's quite difficult to find out uh, much about God and Jesus, but because they're staying in my home, we've been able to study the Bible together, and we're having a great time going through John's John's Gospel and um, learning more about God and Jesus. And then our global gathering group has continued every Tuesday, where we've been able to Uh, meet up with uh, some more of our international friends and then of course Alison and Kat 
have continued to lead our English language cafe twice a week on a Monday and Thursday and we've been able to meet up with uh, a, quite a number of our international friends including um, even one friend who's not even in this country at the moment but it's been great that we can connect up with her so that's been good. Thanks Biddy and we're just going to have a hello from our English language cafe. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Thank you to everybody who took part in that today. Well, in today's story, I think we have to remember that it's a Samaritan who is showing mercy to a Jew. Why is that important? Well, they were enemies. They hated each other. And I guess we're all okay showing love and mercy to people that we like, to our friends and our neighbours. But it's harder when it's somebody we don't know or somebody we don't like or we find awkward. And I think God's love has no boundaries and sometimes he wants to push us out of our comfort zones and he wants us to show mercy to unlikely people. So how can we cross boundaries in showing mercy? I want to give you three words to remember. Care, give and pray. And whether you're watching by yourself today or as a family, why don't you think about how you can care, give and pray in response to what you've heard today? First of all, care. Well, let's keep on doing what we're doing, caring for our friends and neighbours. But I wonder, is there someone near you who's being forgotten? Maybe someone from a different country who's far away from anything familiar, has got no family nearby. Maybe you could help to support them. Or maybe there's a neighbour down your street who really nobody likes very much and they're really quite lonely and would love you to come alongside them. Let's see who we can be caring for this week. Secondly, give. Well, Sanjay said he needs a freezer. I wonder whether there's anybody who can help him with that. Maybe you've got a freezer you don't need or you could give some money towards a new one. But I think we need to look further afield as well. Coronavirus is spreading to some of the world's poorest nations. So what about giving to a charity like Tear Fund or Open Doors, who are trying to reach these people who so desperately need help? You can find information from their websites. And thirdly, pray. Oh, let's keep on praying for our, our key workers, people on the front line, people in our city with all the challenges that they face, people in families, with homeschooling, people who are sick and vulnerable. But why don't we look beyond our own bit of the world and pray for communities far away where the need perhaps is far greater because of poverty or war? Again, the Tear Fund website has all sorts of resources that can help you in praying for different people. There are obvious needs in our city, but let's remember that God loves the whole world and he wants us to love his world as well. We're going to hear now from somebody who's serving God far away from home in Uganda. This is Zilla, one of our Scent Mission partners. Zilla, Denise and Ashley, it's great that you've joined us today. Um, what's life like for you in Uganda at the moment? Thanks, Alison. Um, I don't know if people know, but I'm a physiotherapist and also a lecturer at the university here in physiotherapy. Um, and two months ago, we also went into lockdown about the same time as the UK, although we didn't have any um, people with the disease at that point, so we do have a few now. Um, and so universities closed, schools closed, churches closed, um, and even public and private transport closed. So therefore, we um, people have been really challenged. To, to get to hospital. Um, we, we have a lot of people struggling to, to get necessarily food that they need and so on. So, so it's, a, it's a big change, but it's, we know it is all around the world. Um, I thought the girls could tell you a bit what it's like being in lockdown. So, so Denise, um, who first? Yeah, Denise, tell us what's it like being in lockdown? What's, what's not so good? Um, children, they don't and this is not good not to do that. Uh, so it's not good that they're not able to study. What about you, Ashley? What? Some people they don't have 
a bit slower so they can hear you. Some people they don't have food and some children they don't study. Okay, so some people are not studying, some people don't have food. What's it been like for you? Is there anything good about lockdown? Yes. Go on, tell me. Now we have been, we have sleep and we, 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 we don't wake up early in the morning. Uh, so you don't have to wake up so early, that's good. Yes. Yeah, anything else? Have you had more time to play? you play? Yes. <laughs> okay, um, I think for me obviously there are challenges but also um, there's been some real positives in I've been in part of the COVID team and had a chance to get connections all around Africa really, um, part of the, um, different countries we've been talking about how physio should respond um, and just getting to know my colleagues as we go through a difficult time is, is good. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thanks, Ella. And great to hear what's going on for you many miles away. Um, would you mind leading us in prayer now? It would be great if you could do that. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you that we can worship you from all over the world. We thank you that your love and mercy is not limited by the travel restrictions and closed borders. We know that many people are struggling because of the challenges brought down by the lockdowns um, and different health needs that people have. Father, we say sorry for the times when we don't trust you or we don't recognise your presence with us, even in the difficulties. Please forgive us. We pray that your mercy, which is new every morning, will help each one of us through each day. Well, we're coming to the end of our time together, but we mustn't forget our little finger. Who am I going to tell the story to? We all need to hear this good news of God's mercy and we need to share it with people around us who don't yet know Jesus. So let's ask God, who could I share this story with? And let's pray for opportunities to do that during this week. But I wonder what God's been saying to you today and how are you going to respond to him? Do you need to ask him for his mercy, ask for forgiveness, maybe for the first time? Or maybe because you know you've been walking on the other side and you've not stopped to care for people? Do you need his help to show mercy to people outside of your comfort zone? People who are perhaps different to you or further away? Or do you want his help to share this story with somebody else and to reach out with the message of the good news of Jesus to other people. Well, our prayer, prayer team is available and would love to pray with you about any of these things or other things that are going on in your life at the moment. You can contact them through the phone number 07874 114852. But let's pray together as we come to an end. Father God, thank you for your amazing love for us. Thank you for your mercy that flows to us so freely. And we pray today for your forgiveness for times when we've pushed you aside and for times when we've not loved and cared for other people. Please would you help us this week to think about how we can care, how we can give, how we can pray for this world that you have made and that you love so much. Help us to love others in the way that you love them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Why don't you join us at four o'clock for Preach and Pray? And why don't you come and pray for our world this evening at 7.30 in the Zoom prayer time? They're great times together. And you see faces of people in the church family, which is lovely. The details are on the website and you can find details of other things going on in the life of the church. That's www.abovebarchurch.org.uk. Thanks so much to Tom of the band for leading our music this morning. I love what they're doing. We really appreciate you. Thank you. We're going to finish our time together with a song that reminds us of the need to, to pray for our world and to love our world and to share the message of hope with people around us. So let's sing as we finish. Thanks, Tom.
Facing a task unfinished That drives us to our knees A need that undiminished Rebukes our slothful ease We who rejoice to know Thee Renew before Thy throne The solemn pledge we